Watch Inoue's left foot and you'll notice it creep forward slightly. He takes a short step and then follows that up with a larger step by maneuvering his back foot forward slightly. And this allows Inoue to cover more distance and travel further so that his right hand has a higher chance of landing. And if you look at his final foot position, you'll see that he's covered double the amount of distance that a regular step would have done. And just rewinding back to the beginning of the sequence, you can see that incrementally, Inoue is edging forward so that when he finally plants that left Left foot on the outside of the Balaz's lead foot that will give him the outside foot angle that blocks off half of his body if the Balaz looks to counter. And this is a two in one mechanism. It gives Inoue a chance of landing his right hand first of all, but also it simultaneously protects him from counter shots on the other side. And you'll notice as well that Inoue's feet are very flat footed and that's deliberate so that he has his weight under him at all times. And so at any given moment, if he looks to detonate that right hand, then he has license to do so. And that really helps him by using tactics like the one we spoke about just now. As Inoue's weight is already beneath him, he's not bouncing up and down, he's flat-footed, and so by covering more distance using tactics such as this, it's more effective. And it's also worth noting how sideways on they are to each other. If you look at their stances, and the reason I'm highlighting that is because when you're fighting a wide sideways stance fighter, then taking that outside foot position is even more effective because of the angle of their body. It cuts off even more surface area they have to aim at. And so whether you take the inside step or the outside step against the opposite stance fighter, it's exponentially more effective. Now, in the case here, here with the Balaz, he takes the inside step, but in doing so, you can see he's got more purchase on the punch and Inoue has to pull on it more. And what we saw unfold was the Balaz increasingly take the inside step against Inoue. He was always taking that inside step early on. And Inoue cottoned onto this, and you'll see in the next example, when the Balaz looks to take the inside step, Inoue is braced for that after he pulls on the jab slightly to try and counter him with the left hook and make him duck into the right hand to show the Balaz the potential danger that awaited him with the inside step. Now in the next tactic you'll see Inoue level change. He drops his body position slightly and he's doing so because by lowering his center of gravity that's what the Balaz is focusing on in his immediate periphery. That's what he sees in front of him and it's noticeable as well. Inoue dropping his height is what the Balaz is going to focus on most and it distracts him from what's actually going on. Now watch Inoue's back foot as he edges slightly forwards as a result of that. So by level changing up and down slightly, that was to disguise the fact he's bringing his rear foot forward. And this just adds an extra layer to the tactic we discussed at the beginning of the video where Inoue can now take with his lead foot a more deeper step into range on the outside and enables Inoue to travel more distance, although the right hand on this occasion crashes into the guard more so than the Balaz's body. And quite interestingly, the Balaz actually uses Inoue's tactic against him this time. You can see him take a small step into range and that disguises the biggest step that happens after. As the Balaz blinds Inoue with the jab first of all and then takes a deeper step bringing his rear foot forward and then leaping forwards with that right foot to land that left hand to the body. And Inoue then stays on the ropes for a little while and you can see he's trying to elicit a reaction out of the Balaz using his arms. And Inoue is beckoning the Balaz towards him but the Balaz isn't taking the bait and Inoue tries again this time lifting both of his arms up but the Balaz doesn't oblige. And Inoue is not getting the reaction he's looking for from the Balaz so he tries again once more but it's unsuccessful. As ultimately by flashing his arms like that Inoue is trying to expose his guard and invite the Balaz to try and counter him. He's trying to bait him but the Balaz isn't taking the bait. In the fourth round we then saw Inoue change the angle of his body slightly so that when he took that outside step it was easier to trip the Balaz on the exit and you can see from the angle of his toes there that the Balaz can trip easier over his foot. And this is very, very subtle, but exceptionally effective in this particular instance, because by positioning his toes there and planting his foot from that angle, when he lands the right hand, the Balaz is naturally going to be moving backwards and away from the right hand. But now that there's an obstacle just behind his feet, it will trip him up as he's moving in that direction anyway. And Inoue looks to try and count him with a left hook on the pivot. But the Balaz still hasn't got his balance under him, as you can see his left foot dangling in the air there. And so when he plants it, Inoue is then able to get through with that right hand through the guard. And he's beginning to find his distance, so Inoue then crashes through the guard of the Balaz with a left hook, and that sends him backpedaling towards the ropes. And then for good measure, Inoue follows up with a series of shots with the Balaz's back towards the ropes, and ultimately he drops him. And this is the first knockdown of the
the fight, although Tabales beats the count and returns to his feet, although there were five seconds left of the round when he was dropped, and so the referee calls it to the end of the round. And then Tabales became more front leg heavy in the fifth round, sitting down on his shots in the pocket and landing some good body shots on a new way. He was standing his ground. Growing in confidence, Tabales then begins taking the inside step again in the following round against a new way, and we saw the dangers that posed earlier when he took that inside step. He was vulnerable to the left hook. And so after throwing the left hook, Inoue misses, but then he takes that outside step just as Tabales is withdrawing, and that gives him more distance to travel and land that right hand with. And Tabales realizes how much danger there is stepping on the inside, so he then steps on the outside as he looks to get off that jab to the body, but then shortly afterwards, he returns by going back to the inside again. And as he takes that inside step, he's actually caught this time with the first shot from Inoue, where he lands the left hook, and then he misses with the right hand after, but this makes the Tabales more conscious. And Tabales is becoming increasingly wary of the threat of taking that inside step against Inoue. And then you'll see shortly afterwards, Inoue takes a deeper step on the outside. And this time round, Inoue is having more success by taking that outside step more and more. This one crashes through the guard of Tabales and he takes the shot well to his credit. As Inoue lands flush and centrally. And the issue for Tabales was that when he was taking the outside step now, Inoue was timing him with shots as he did. So inside step or outside step he was getting timed and you can see here that this time he's knocked off balance and that was from taking the outside foot position so it's happening from both angles now and if you watch the positioning of their feet it's getting far closer so now when Inoue takes that outside step it's even deeper and he can travel even more distance with the right hand momentum and this is becoming a more common feature of the fight if you look at their feet positioning almost touching each other and this time round Inoue steps on his toe and stepping on the toe pins the ballers in a fixed position so that Inoue Inoue's right hand momentum can travel through the target with his right hand momentum and then the end is nigh shortly where you see Inoue from this position here, the ball is leaning forwards behind that peekaboo stance, he looks above his gloves. Leaning forwards, he now has to retract more to get away from the right hand and by the time he does, Inoue's already landed it and he lands flush. And that was the biggest mistake that the ball has made in this instance, leaning closer into that right hand, it doesn't have to travel as much distance but what does have to travel more distance is the ball is because he has to retract more to get to a stationary upright position and that right cross gets through and ultimately this is the second knockdown of the fight and the referee waves it off as the Bales is not able to get up to his feet he's not able to beat the count and ultimately it's a knockout victory where in the 10th round the referee waves it off and Nayo Anue wins and further positions his claim for being fighter of the year 2023 in boxing which seems to be a two horse race between Anue and Bud Thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions that you'd like me to answer for you in future videos or the extended breakdowns, just tweet them over to me. That's at ElusiveRaf on Twitter. If you guys want to see my daily fight analysis uploads, I upload those every day to Instagram and that's at Elusive 2.0 on Instagram.